हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू एट अराइजर टैलेंट हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू आर डूइंग एब्सोल्यूटली ग्रेट सो आई एम योर फिजिक्स टीचर क्रीना एंड वी हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर दैट इज अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रिकसिटी सो लेट्स डू अ क्विक रिविजन दैट वॉट वी हैव डील्ड इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर फर्स्टली वी हैव एन इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रिक करंट then we will we have a discussion about the electric charges we have seen a property of the electric charges then we came across a new term that what will be the electric field and electric potential in a circuit so i hope these all terms has been clear to you because these are the basics of the chapter we have now today we are going to start our new topic which is very very important that is about the ohms law but before starting the ohms law let's have a discussion about the types of the conducting material we have so today we are going to discuss about the ohms law but before that let's have a discussion about types of conducting material now this is a very general thing and you have been studied these things from your 6th or 7th class now you have seen in your daily life that some of the components or some of the substances have a tendency to uh, provide the flow of current through them it means agar kuch substance aise hain jinme se current ko hum pass kar sakte hain to wo kehlate hain hamare conductors humne bachpan se padha hai that metals are the good conductor of electricity because the metals have a tendency to pass the electric current through them but what is the reason behind that the, that some of the components or some of the substance have a tendency to pass the current through them while the others do not the basic reason behind that is the free electrons we know that for every electrical phenomena to occur there must be needed a carriers agar hame electric current ko flow karwana hai to hame kya zarurat padegi hame carriers ki zarurat padegi aur wo carriers kya hote hain these carriers are the free electrons ab agar hum baat kare ek atom ki to atom mein kya kya hota hai center mein nucleus aur electrons uske around revolve karte hain अब क्या होता है जो पॉजिटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल होते हैं दैट इज कॉल्ड प्रोटॉन्स वो न्यूक्लियस से बाउंडेड होते हैं इट मींस दे डू नॉट हैव एनी रोल इन द कंडक्शन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिकसिटी सो व्हाट इज द मेन रीजन बिहाइंड द कंडक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकसिटी दिस इज ओनली वन फैक्टर दैट इज फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इफ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर प्रेजेंट देन देयर विल बी अ कंडक्शन सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वी हैव द थ्री टाइप ऑफ द कंडक्टिंग मटीरियल एंड वॉट आर दीज these conducting material are insulators semiconductors and conductors so we have the th these three category of the material based on the availability of the free electrons now what are insulators insulators are those substances which do not have any free electron if they do not have any free electron they will they do not have any part in the conduction of electricity so suppose if you are going to pass electricity through a paper or a plastic is it possible to pass the electric current through it it might not be possible this is not possible because paper and plastic is a insulator we have so what are insulators insulators are those substance which do not have free electrons insulators do not have free electrons because the free electrons are responsible for the conduction of electricity insulators do not have free electrons so conduction of current will not be possible in the case of insulators now let's move to the next term we have semiconductors this is semiconductor semi means half of insulator and half of conductor and they lie in the range between the insulator and the conductor uh, you have heard about the semiconductors as we are using several electronic gadgets in our day to day life we are using remote we are using television we are using computers we are using laptops and mobiles all these consist of a chips these chips are basically made up of the 
सेमी कंडक्टिंग मटीरियल तो जो भी हमारे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक गैजेट्स हैं उसमें जो हमारी चिप्स बनी हुई होती हैं दैट चिप्स आर मेड अप ऑफ द सेमी कंडक्टिंग मटीरियल अब सेमी कंडक्टिंग मटीरियल क्या होगा जो लो टेम्परेचर पे इंसुलेटर का काम करेगा और हाई टेम्परेचर पे कंडक्टर का काम करेगा तो इट मीन्स इसके अंदर दोनों प्रॉपर्टीज हैं इंसुलेटर की भी और कंडक्टर की भी दैट्स वाई इट्स नेम इज सेमी कंडक्टर सो सेमी कंडक्टर्स बिहेव एज एन इंसुलेटर बट इट विल बिहेव एज एन इंसुलेटर ओनली एट अ लो टेम्परेचर बट एट हाई टेम्परेचर दे विल बिहेव एज कंडक्टर इट मीन्स दे आर बिहेव दे विल बिहेव एज अ कंडक्टर ओनली एट अ हाई टेम्परेचर सो वी कैन राइट हियर वेन द टेम्परेचर इज हाई दे विल बिहेव एज अ कंडक्टर नाउ आफ्टर इंसुलेटर एंड सेमी कंडक्टर वी हैव अवर लास्ट कैटेगरी दैट इज अबाउट द कंडक्टर्स एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स दीज हैव अ ट्रिमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विच विल लीड पॉसिबल टू द फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करंट थ्रू दैम All the metals that are present in the pure state are the good conductors of heat and electricity. So, conductors are those materials which have free electrons. So, if they have the free electrons, they will conduct the electricity very easily so we can say that current conduction will be possible in this case so they will conduct the electricity so this is all about the types of the semiconducting material we have that is insulator semiconductor and conductor Uh, now we are starting our very important topic that is about the ohms law which will give you a basic relation between v i and r now what is v i and r let's discuss now but before that just copy it from here now let's move to the new new topic we have that is about the ohms law so our next topic will be about ohms law now the relationship that will be established between v i and r keeping all the conditions constant it means temperature is constant and all other environmental factors are kept constant the ohms law states that the current in any conduct conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends now what will be the ohms law let's study here with a diagrammatic representation we have
Now, what basically the Ohm's law states that suppose we have taken any conductor. This is our conductor. It may be metallic conductor or some other conductor. If I am applying a voltage across its end, you can see that current will start flowing from positive to negative. We know that the direction of the current will be from positive to negative. But if I am talking about the electronic current, electronic current is basically the flow of electrons. So its direction will from will be from negative to positive. So the direction of the flow of electrons will always be opposite to the direction of the flow of the current. So these two have a different different directions here. Now what Ohm's law basically states that the voltage ap applied across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing in the conductor. It means jitna system mein voltage ya potential difference jada hoga, utna hi current conductor mein flow karega. So what is the basic, this is a very important law we have. So let's write the basic statement here. It states that at constant temperature, the current flowing in a conductor is directly proportional to potential difference applied across its ends. It means the current flowing in any conductor will be directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its end. So we can say that I is directly proportional to V. I will be our current and V will be our potential difference. Now, if we are removing any proportionality rule, we will always put a constant term here. So what I can write here, if I am removing the uh, this proportionality, I can write here I equal to Rv. Now this R is a proportionality constant we have. So we can write here R is our proportionality constant. And what this proportionality constant is called? This proportionality constant is termed as a resistance of a circuit. This is termed as resistance of circuit. So what we will obtain from the Ohm's law that I is equal to Vr or V upon I will give you R. So we can also modify the relation as if I am writing, suppose I am writing voltage will be directly proportional to current then it will become V equal to Ri and it is going to give you V equal to Ir. So this is our Ohm's law. So the voltage in any conductor or the potential difference applied across any conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing in that conductor. So this is our Ohm's law. Now, V is equal to IR, this is our Ohm's law and this formula is very important for solving numerical problems. Now, we can also write it as V upon I equal to R. We can also write it as V, equal, v upon I equal to R. It means V upon I is actually a constant term. But voltage is directly proportional to the current. As you increase the voltage, the current will automatically going to increase in a conductor. But if I am calculating the relation between R and I and R and V, the, these two uh, quantities will be inversely proportional to the each other. So this will give you a ratio and this ratio is known as the resistance of a circuit. Now, Ohm's law 
the unit of resistance will be calculated from the ohms to the unit of the resistance will be ohm and in uh, terms of physics it is known as omega unit of resistance r is equal to v upon i it means resistance is defined as a ratio of potential difference to the current so for the potential difference what we have unit we have a unit known as volt and for the current we have a unit that is called ampere so it is equal to volt ampere inverse and this resistance is denoted by ohm and this will be the symbol and this symbol is known as omega in physics we will call this symbol as a omega and for the unit of resistance it is termed as a ohm because it has been derived from the ohms law so this is the basic classification that we have discussed about the ohms law so ohms law generally give you a relationship between v i and r now let us see the explanation of this law but before that just copy it from here because this is a very important law so the unit of resistance is ohm and resistance is obtained simply by the ratio of v and i now the question here is when will be the resistance of a circuit set to be 1 ohm we have just derived an expression that v upon i equal to r this is our ohms law and you know that resistance will be the ratio of potential difference to the current but when will be the resistance of a circuit set to be 1 ohm so the resistance is set to be 1 ohm resistance is set to be 1 ohm when potential difference is 1 volt and current flowing through a conductor will be 1 ampere and current flowing in conductor is 1 ampere if current in the conductor is 1 ampere and potential difference applied across its ends will be 1 volt we can say that the resistance of a circuit will be 1 ohm so this is about the 1 ohm resistance what is 1 ohm 1 ohm resistance we have unit about the resistance we have discussed that the unit of resistance will be ohm now let us check a simple curve between the v and i values that what will be obtained from the curve so here we have curve between v and i now this is our x axis this is our y axis on x axis we are plotting the values of current and on this y axis we are plotting the value for potential difference the potential difference will be denoted by v so here starting from 0 i am writing 1i 2i 3i 4i and 5i and here we are taking 1 volt 2 volt 3 volt 4 volt 5 volt and 6 volt now we can see that as soon as voltage applied across the end of a conductor is increased the current will also going to increase it means if the voltage is increased current is increased so we will get the graph line of this curve as a straight line 
and what this straight line is indicating as soon as you will increase the voltage value you will get the current values increasing in the similar manner so this the straight line will give you the graph for a v and i curve now what this straight line indicates this line will basically indicates the slope of a curve this line will give you a slope of a curve and the slope of a curve will be v upon i and v upon i will be the value of resistance it means from this graph the slope of the curve v upon i we will get the value of the resistance is here because v upon i is actually the resistances we have so this is all about the ohm slope curve now the question arises do all the materials will follow the ohm slope ohm slope sare material ke liye applicable hoga nahi hoga kyunki ohm slope un material ke liye applicable hoga जो वो ओमिक डिवाइसेस होंगे जो ओम स्लो को फॉलो करेंगे इट मींस अगर वोल्टेज की वैल्यू इंक्रीज हुई तो करंट की वैल्यू भी इंक्रीज होगी लेकिन सारे डिवाइसेस हमारे पास ओमिक डिवाइसेस नहीं होते हैं तो जो डिवाइसेस ओम स्लो को फॉलो करेंगे उनको हम ओमिक डिवाइसेस बोलेंगे और वो बेसिकली कंडक्टर्स होते हैं लेकिन अगर हम सेमी की बात करें डायोड्स की बात करें ट्रांजिस्टर्स की बात करें तो वो ओम स्लो को फॉलो नहीं करते हैं बिकॉज उनके लिए वी और आई की वैल्यू सेम सेम वे में इंक्रीमेंट नहीं करती है तो जो डिवाइसेस ओम स्लो को फॉलो करेंगे उसे हम बोलेंगे ओमिक डिवाइसेस सो दिस इज द एक्सेप्शन इन द ओम स्लो सो दिस फिगर इज अवर वी आई कर now the next topic is about exceptions in ohms law so the devices which follow ohms law ohms law means v directly proportional to i are called ohmic devices but we have certain devices which are not going to follow the ohms law so if the devices which are not going to follow the ohms law these are known as non ohmic devices so we have the devices which do not follow ohms law are known as non ohmic devices now conductors are basically our ohmic devices because the pure metal will have a tendency to show the vi curve as a ohm slope but in case of the semiconductors like diodes transistors and we have few materials which are not going to follow the ohm slope so non ohmic devices are semiconductor diodes transistors etc so these are the devices which do not follow this curve if they are not following this curve then what curve they will follow we will see the curve for the non ohmic devices that where the v will not be directly proportional to i and for different values of v we will see that we will not get we will not get a straight line curve here so they uh, let us check the representation of non ohmic curve here you can see that this is a curve for our ohmic devices now we have a curve between 
नो नोमिक डिवाइसेस सपोज द फर्स्ट नो नोमिक डिवाइस आई एम कंसिडरिंग हियर इज अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रिक बल्ब सो अगेन इफ आई एम गोइंग टू प्लॉट द ग्राफ दिस इज अवर आई वैल्यू एंड दिस इज अवर वैल्यूज फॉर वोल्टेज so this is our vi curve you can see that we will not get a straight line here we will not getting a straight line here so this is our vi curve for electric bulb electric bulb will not going to follow the ohm's law now let us check the vi curve for the diode so if i'm plotting the curve for the semiconductor diode you can see that again we are not obtaining the straight line curve so we will obtain the curve like this you can see here that v and i values are not same again in this case so for the bulb and for the diode we can say that the ohm's law is not obeying because v and i values are not as that of the previous curve so the devices which do not follow the ohm's law are known as the non ohmic devices and in the category of the non ohmic devices we have diodes transistor and many type of the se semiconducting material so this is all about the ohm's law we have discussed it just gives you the relationship between v i and r and this formula is very important for solving the numerical problems we have so this lecture is over for today we will deal with many more topics in our next lecture Thank you so much and have a nice day